Welcome back. Last time we figured out how to get electrical power to a satellite. And we noted that, since there are no wall outlets in space, Earth orbiting satellites use solar panels to convert the sun's energy into electricity. That electricity is then stored in a rechargeable battery that provides power to the rest of the satellite's payload. In this segment, we'll use that electricity to power the next most critical system on a satellite, communication. Communication means both talking to a satellite, telling it what to do, and listening to the satellite, asking how it's feeling and downloading any data that it's collected. As always, communication is a two-way street, but maybe in this case it's more like a four-way street because satellite communication requires both a way to transmit and receive information on board the satellite, as well as a system to receive and transmit information on the ground, on Earth. On the satellite, the receivers or transmitters can look like small radio dishes or funny looking antennas. The system that transmits and receives on the Earth is called the ground station. This too can be a large satellite dish, and these satellite dishes are sometimes housed in giant sort of golf ball looking domes. Building a ground station or buying time on an existing ground station are important parts of a satellite's budget or business plan. The way satellites communicate is very similar to how we communicate via cell phones or wireless internet. But like, how do we communicate via cell phones or wireless internet? In all of these cases, information is transmitted using radio waves. Radio waves are a kind of electromagnetic radiation, a, a kind of light. If we look at the electromagnetic spectrum, on one side are gamma rays and ultraviolet light, in the middle is the optical light that our eyes are sensitive to, and on the other side is infrared and radio waves. What separates these regions is the wavelength or frequency of light. Radio waves have longer wavelengths or lower frequencies as compared to other kinds of light. The wavelength for radio waves ranges from millimeters to tens of meters, which is the same thing as saying they range in frequency from a few hundred gigahertz to a few megahertz. And radio waves are all around us. Cell phones communicate at frequencies between 700 and 2000 megahertz. Wireless internet operates at a frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. And if you have an internet router nearby, if you look closely, the radio frequency is often written on the box somewhere. Here's a fun fact. Your microwave oven also uses radio waves and also operates at 2.4 gigahertz. So a microwave and wireless internet uses the same frequency of radio waves, but one can eat leftovers and the other carries information. So what's going on here? Imagine light as a kind of wave. Okay, not that kind of wave, a sine wave going up and down. This is what's used to cook your food in a microwave. The radio waves oscillate up and down, exciting water molecules in your food. This motion of water molecules rocking back and forth creates heat. Radio waves used for communication are also sine waves, but on top of the gentle up and down, wireless and cell phones and satellites modify or modulate this sine wave to carry information. They also operate at wildly lower power levels, so they can't cook anything. A sine wave can be modulated into a couple different ways. Its amplitude can be modified, or its frequency can be modified. So amplitude modification or frequency modulation, AM or FM. And by slightly changing either the amplitude or frequency of radio waves, you can encode information. Whether it's your favorite YouTube video over wireless internet, or the latest images coming down from the Hubble Space Telescope. We modulate radio waves to both talk and listen to satellites. And maybe the information you encode is encrypted so other people can't listen in on what you're saying, but even encrypted information is transmitted by the same process of modulating radio waves. Okay, so that's how we use radio waves to transmit information. But this process works for all wavelengths. You can modulate any kind of light from x-rays or UVs or optical. So we next need to ask, why radio waves? For satellite communication, the fastest way to answer this question is by looking at the Earth's atmosphere. Our atmosphere blocks certain wavelengths of light. X-rays and UV light are completely blocked by the atmosphere. And this is a good thing, otherwise we get awful sunburns or worse by just stepping outside for a few seconds. Optical light is transmitted through the atmosphere, but then infrared light is again blocked. Then we get to radio waves. 
If we want to communicate with satellites in space, we need light that can travel through our atmosphere unimpeded. Radio waves fill that requirement. Now, that does beg the question of why not use optical light to communicate with satellites. Optical communication has actually been demonstrated in space, but it's not yet often used for communication. And the reason is that the wavelength of optical light is shorter than radio, and to modulate optical light requires super fast computers. And things like clouds can interrupt data flow. So the advantage of optical is that the data rates can be higher, um, but the disadvantage is that it can be interrupted by clouds. The last thing I want to discuss about satellite communication is how to avoid confusion. There are thousands of satellites in orbit around our Earth, and each is constantly talking with its ground station. If every satellite uses radio waves to communicate, and these are competing with cell phones and wireless internet, how does everyone avoid talking over each other? That is, how do we avoid the equivalent situation of trying to hear one person talk in a super loud and overcrowded room? The solution is to split the radio spectrum into tiny pieces and assign each satellite a small range of allowable frequencies. Two satellites talking at different frequencies won't interfere with each other. So think about like an old school radio. If you turn the dial, you change the frequency, you can hear individual radio stations, and each station is assigned its own frequency. So like 96.5 FM WTIC. The radio spectrum colors or bands are called K, X, S, or L band, all the way up to UHF and VHF. Old school FM radio stations broadcast in VHF. Wireless internet communicates in the S band. These radio bands are further split and allocated for different uses. And this allocation can get pretty messy. In the US, frequencies are allocated for use by the Federal Communication Commission, so the FCC, or the National Telecommunication and Information Administration, depending on if it's for a commercial or government request. And more globally, this process of allocating frequencies is run by the International Telecommunication Union, or the ITU. A visualization of this allocation across the whole radio spectrum is pretty crazy. So in this image, you can see regions that are allocated for AM and FM radio. You can also find slices for different kinds of satellite use. So communication satellites, weather satellites, Earth observing satellites, and regions allocated for space research. There are even tiny little regions protected for radio astronomy. Satellites and other users of the radio spectrum have incentives to stay within their allocated frequency. Otherwise, there'll be just so much noise and confusion that no one will be able to communicate. And so when a new US-based satellite, commercial satellite, wants to launch, one of the many things they need to do is to apply to the FCC for a license to communicate with their satellite. Once they have a license, an allocated frequency, they'll use that particular frequency to communicate between the ground station and the satellite. OK, so now we have electrical power on our satellite and a way to communicate with Earth. So for satellites whose goal is communication, think satellite TV or satellite internet, we're done. The bulk of a communication satellite's payload consists of a solar panel, batteries, and hardware to transmit and receive radio signals. In the next segment, we'll focus on satellite whose mission is for taking pictures. For those satellites, we need one more additional payload component, imaging cameras.